This is Math 142. We are taking a look at Section uh, 7.1 for trig identities. And the first thing I want to remind you about are these relationships here, where sine is the same as 1 over cosecant, and cosecant is the same as, as 1 over sine. These are called reciprocal um, identities here, right? Like, because it's the reciprocal, that you flip the fraction. Tangent to cotangent, etc. Tangent's also sine over cosine. Okay, so there's a couple things to remember. Um, so our first identity we're going to talk about is, it pops up all the time, and it's called the Pythagorean identity. So we have some angle, I'll just call it theta. And we know that this, this position right here, where the theta terminates, this, this point right here, as long as this is on the unit circle, as long as this distance is 1, we know that the height is sine. So if I go sine of theta, sine of that angle, what it will spit out is that height. And if I go cosine of that angle, what it will spit out is that is that width right there. So this point we could talk about is the point cosine theta sine theta. And that's the whole underpinning, that's the whole um, underpinning of the unit circle, right, where this radius is 1. So notice what we have here is this right triangle with this link, this side is cosine, this side is sine. Well, that we know that the Pythagorean theorem tells us a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we know that uh, if I go sine squared plus cosine squared, or I could say cosine squared plus sine squared, I get 1 squared is 1. So that identity right there, that is our first trig identity. That's a way that sine and cosine are related to each other. And it's through the Pythagorean theorem. So this is the uh, Pythagorean identity. And uh, so this is a great thing to remember. What's nice here is we can get there. Uh, we can get to two other versions of the Pythagorean identity by doing a little bit of division. So for example, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So let me write that down. Now I'm going to divide both sides by sine squared. So notice if I go sine squared. So from here, sine squared divided by sine squared is 1. Cosine squared divided by sine squared. Well, tangent is sine over cosine. So cotangent is cosine over sine. And 1 over sine squared, 1 over sine is cosecant. So there's another Pythagorean identity, which is uh, divide everything by sine. Similarly, if I go back and divide everything by cosine, Let's see, sine over cosine is tangent, so that's tangent squared plus 1 equals 1 over cosine. Well, we know that that is secant, so that would be secant squared. So that's a, another relationship. And just off of this one picture, just off of this one piece, I get three different Pythagorean identities. So these are things to look for. And the thing that I'm always looking for is, is something squared and is there a 1 involved? <laughs> I mean, that's... That's really it. So there's one piece of identities. Uh, another piece I want to get at is what are called even odd identities. And this is, this is what they basically get at. Uh, sine of negative theta or cosine of negative theta. What are they? And if I think about sine, sine is height. So right here's some angle theta. Sine is its height. And if I did a negative same rotation of that, Notice it makes it go down, right? So this would be positive some magnitude. This would be negative some magnitude. So this is equal to negative sine of that theta. In other words, it's the same um, magnitude of height. It's just going down instead of up or up instead of down. And cosine is width. Cosine is this value, right? So if I do a positive rotation or a negative rotation, they're going to have the exact same cosine value. So cosine of negative. Uh, theta is just cosine of theta. And I'll just tell you tangent does the same thing as sine. So there's some even odd relationships. Those are relationships to keep in mind as well. And just to get at that, that vocabulary, even odd, I don't think it's terribly important. But if you think about the graph of sine, um, at the origin, sine goes like that. And if you think about cosine, uh, cosine goes like this. 
and uh, more or less, it's not a great cosine. So notice that this has rotational symmetry. That's called an odd, odd function. And this has reflective symmetry. That's called an even function. That's just where that vocabulary even odd comes from. What we can do with these two sets of relationships is do what's called verify some, um, some relationships or some equations. So for example, if I made the claim that uh, tangent of theta times cosine of theta equals sine of theta. Well, how could I verify that? So when I'm working to verify things, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one side and manipulate it, try and turn it into the other side. And uh, one thing to do, one kind of good piece of advice is if you're not sure what to do, turn everything into terms of, into, into cosine and sine. So tangent, I know is sine over cosine. So I'm going to write tangent as sine over cosine. And notice that's multiplied by cosine. And that's cosine over 1. Oh, well, that divided by itself is 1. And that does equal sine. So verified, this left side does, in fact, equal that right side. So now what we'll do a little bit of is what's called verifying. And when it comes to verifying, what we're trying to do is show that one side equals the other side. So typically, we'll just pick one side and manipulate it to try and make it look like the other side. So as I look at this, this first one right here, uh, tangent theta times cosine theta, um, one technique for us to do is we want to do some multiplication. So you want to do the arithmetic uh, that's, that's in front of you. But also, sometimes it's a lot easier if that arithmetic is in terms of sine and cosine. So if you can turn everything in terms of sine and cosine, that's going to help a ton. So tangent, uh, as we know, if we, we look back to these relationships, is sine over cosine. So let's rewrite tangent as sine over cosine. And notice that's multiplied by cosine, which is just cosine over 1. And this multiplication, well, cosine divided by cosine is 1. So this divides out, leaving me just sine, and it's verified. Let's do a couple more. So take a look at this one. Uh, 1 plus cosine beta times 1 minus cosine negative beta equals sine squared beta. Let's focus on the left-hand side. There's some arithmetic to do here, some multiplying. Things are in terms of sine and cosine. That's pretty good. This cosine of negative b, let's resolve that. And that makes me think back to those even-odd functions. Uh, cosine of a negative angle is the same as cosine of that angle because they're both width. right? A positive rotation and a negative rotation give you the same, the same width. So this is the same as just saying, well, cosine of negative b is, beta is just the same as cosine of beta. Now I can multiply this out. 1 times 1 is 1. Uh, 1 times negative cosine beta is negative cosine beta. Cosine beta times 1 is cosine beta. Cosine beta times negative cosine beta is negative uh, cosine squared beta. Right? And when we write when we write cosine squared, that means the beta, the angle is put into cosine and then it's squared. These mean the same thing. This is just um, a little less ambiguous about this. And let's keep going from here. Well, this is nice. Negative cosine b plus cosine b is 0. So that just adds out to 0. So I'm left with 1 minus cosine squared. And let's see. I've got a 1 there. I've got a cosine squared there. That sure makes me think about the Pythagorean identities. right? Like I know that cosine squared, I know sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So notice if I subtract this cosine squared from both sides, right? subtract this from both sides, I get sine squared, or whatever my angle is, is 1 minus cosine squared of that angle. So this is just uh, sine squared, which is what I was trying to get it to be, boom, verified. So if you'll notice, one of the things that I've been doing is I've just been kind of doing this way of thinking about it. First thing is I just pick one side to work on. Um, and then I do some combination of these two things. I do the arithmetic. Uh, is there factoring to be done? Is there squaring to be done? Uh, can I, do I need to add or subtract some fractions? 
Also, I put everything in terms of sine and cosine because I know how to manipulate them and I can always turn them back into the other formats if I need them. So with that in mind, let's take a look at this next one. And in this one, I'm not verifying, it's just saying get everything in terms of sine. Okay, so two is two. Tangent is uh, sine over cosine. Secant, and again, if you don't know them, look them up, right? It's, it's a good idea to just have these in front of you, look at them so you get familiar with them. But either way, uh, secant is one over cosine. And I've got some arithmetic to do, so I've got two. And when I multiply fractions, multiply straight across, sine times sine, uh, sine times one, sorry, is sine. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared. And it's telling me to get everything in terms of sine. So cosine squared, well, that takes me back to that Pythagorean identity. Cosine squared plus sine squared is one. So cosine squared is one minus sine squared. And there we go, everything is in terms of sine. Again, what we're trying to do is really practice getting to getting really familiar with these um, and the way that they are uh, the way that they work together. All these relationships is what I mean. Sorry, that was a little ambiguous. All of these right here, just really getting to know them. Right. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, one minus cosine squared plus one plus cotangent squared. Now this one is going to feel. A little different. I could get everything. I could multiply, right? Like one times one is one, but negative cosine squared times cotangent squared, that's kind of a mess. Uh, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I think I'm going to not even turn things into sine and cosine. What I notice is I've got a one and a cosine squared. I've got a one and a cotangent squared. These scream Pythagorean identities to me. And like this one we've dealt with a couple times. I know this is sine squared. Now one plus cotangent squared. If you don't know it, refer back to your notes and be like, ah, one plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. It's cosecant squared. So I can replace this with cosecant squared. And now let's see, that's in terms of sine. Cosecant is one over sine. So cosecant squared is one over sine squared. And if I multiply these fractions together, so, you know, sine divided by sine is one, it's one which verifies out to one. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about, it's similar, but it's still some of this manipulation. Notice I said in here in the do the arithmetic part, um, can you factor it? Is it do you, can you square it? That sort of thing. So let's look at some examples like that. So sine squared uh, theta minus 25. Sine squared, remember this, this notation right here means sine squared. And 25 is 5 squared, so I could write this as 5 squared. And I have a difference of two squares here. So this would factor to sine plus 5, sine minus 5. And again, this could be nested in a larger problem. You know, maybe it's over one of these and it cancels out when you divide or something like that. Uh, that idea of factoring, again, could extend to something that's written like this. Now notice I have two cosine squared plus cosine minus one. In your mind, just think like, let's just have this little a equals cosine theta, just, just to kind of focus our mind. And then if we, if we substituted that in, this would be two a squared plus a plus one. We know how to factor that, right? And it would just be factored in terms of a. So you could say, oh, 2a minus 1. That's a plus 1. Yeah, 2a minus, minus a is a in that middle term. But it's not a, it's cosine. So this factors to 2 cosine minus 1 times cosine of theta plus 1. And there it is factored. Uh, this last one, cosecant squared minus cotangent squared. Now it feels like, 
you know, if you're just factoring it, you could. You could be like, I'm just going to say uh, this is cosecant is difference of squares, right? Cosecant plus cotangent times cosecant minus cotangent. But it's kind of, there's a little cleverness going on here. Cosecant and cotangent, they're both squared. That makes me think about Pythagorean identities. If I go back to my Pythagorean identities, cosecant squared is 1 plus cotangent squared. Okay, so I'm going to take advantage of that. So what that means is I can substitute 1 plus cotangent squared in for that cosecant. So I've got 1 plus cotangent squared minus cotangent squared. Oh, and that's just a 0. So this thing's just equal to 1. And just in case, like, there's not always a clear path for these. Like, there's not always just one way to do it. Like, another way I could do this is I could say, well, maybe I'll just substitute something in for cotangent. So subtract 1 from both sides here. And notice if you do that, cosecant squared minus 1 is cotangent squared. So I could replace this with this whole cosecant minus 1. So I would have uh, cosecant squared minus that quantity cosecant squared minus 1. And then if I think about doing the arithmetic here, distribute that negative into there. A negative, negative 1 is positive 1. That's 0 again, and it still equals 1. All right, uh, this work is really, um, it's kind of different than a lot of math we ask people to do. It's not as linear, do this, do this, and you solve the problem. There's a little bit of artfulness to this, thinking about these, how you can do substitution to, to make what you want to happen, happen. So it does take some practice which I'd like you to do, and message me with any questions you have, post questions in the forum, and uh, get this in. It's really good to know these relationships.